and welcome back we have a 2005 ford f-150 and we're gonna go ahead and get the front brakes done on this now this repair does apply anywhere from 2004 up to 2008 models as long as you have a two-wheel drive system now if your vehicle is the four-wheel drive model it's a different setup from what i understand the four-wheel drive you can replace the rotor alone and the wheel bearing stays attached to the car now with the two-wheel drive setups like we have here the wheel bearing is part of the rotor so you have to change them out as an assembly okay so safety first you've seen i jacked up the truck and i put jack stands underneath the frame now you always want to use jack stands do not rely on a floor jack they're not safe at all before you remove your wheel i do recommend removing the cotter pin getting the cover off and trying to remove the nut that holds the wheel bearing in place since it is the most difficult part of the job it's just better to get it done right now now i am using an impact gun so it's making it pretty easy for me but it doesn't always mean that it's going to come off on this side my impact gun was able to get it off which i was actually surprised because when i did the other side of the vehicle the impact gun would not cut it and i had to resort to option number two which is uh right here and it was pretty difficult now that that nut is loose we can continue with removing the wheel now it doesn't look like it here but the truck is up on the jack stands right now so obviously do not remove your lug nuts if the truck is still on the ground now just to make the job a little bit easier on yourself sit inside of the truck and if you're working on the passenger side of the vehicle make sure you turn your steering wheel all the way to the left and if you're working on the driver's side turn your steering wheel all the way to the right and it's just going to give you better access to the back of the caliper there are two fasteners holding the caliper down to the caliper bracket now we only need to remove the lower fastener because we're going to end up rotating the caliper upward to give us access to the brake pads now as you can see things are pretty rusted on this vehicle so i had to fight the rust and it just made the job a bit more complicated hopefully yours isn't as rusted as this one was Now this clip right here fell off when I removed the caliper but normally it would sit right here on top of the brake pads so we're just going to go ahead and remove both of these clips. I didn't get a good shot of this but if you look at the pad material it's actually separating from the backing plate when i did the brakes on the other side of the truck uh more of the pad was actually separated from that plate so it was a uh, way past due for these brakes to get changed and here goes the hard work kit you can see how they're just pretty much destroyed they, they cannot be used any longer so um when you go out to buy brake pads i know they sell like a uh, you want to call them an economy set basically it's just a brake pads they're not going to give you any of the shims or the hardware kit and uh you're definitely gonna have to go out and buy the hardware kit separate but i just recommend getting like the mid-grade uh brake pads they usually tend to come with the hardware kit so you wouldn't have to worry about it at that point now's a good time to remove the cap off of the brake reservoir and the reason for that is we're going to be pushing the pistons into the caliper and the brake fluid needs somewhere to go so if you have the cap on the reservoir it's pretty much like an airtight system and it's just going to make it that much harder to push these pistons in. Some people would argue that you should break open the bleeder valve and as you push the pistons into the cylinder you want that old fluid to come out and you can extract it that way. But I've never really had an issue by pushing it back into the reservoir and on top of that given the condition of this caliper seeing how everything is just so rusty i can almost guarantee that that bleeder valve is just going to snap right off the second i try to move it so it's best to not even touch it
Now we can slide our caliper off of the caliper bracket and I'm going to use this hook right here to just hang it up on the upper control arm. Uh, you can use anything to hang it up, a zip tie, wire, string, it really doesn't matter. You just don't want the caliper hanging off of the brake hose. Now with the caliper bracket out of the way we can remove our rotor slash wheel bearing assembly. Now this is what I was talking about earlier where if you had a two wheel drive versus a four wheel drive it is going to be different. With the two wheel drive the rotor comes complete with the wheel bearing. If you had a four wheel drive it would just be a normal disc that you would remove like any other car. And obviously there's just an excessive amount of rust here so I'm just trying to knock off the big chunks you know try to get whatever I can out of the way and here I have the file going right where uh, the caliper brackets gonna bolt up now I'm not trying to deform the metal in any way or take any type of metal material off it just looked like there was a lot of rust built right on the edge right there and I was really trying to knock that down because if the caliper bracket doesn't sit flush where it's supposed to then the caliper itself isn't gonna sit right Now I couldn't find any information saying that you're supposed to put grease right here but I mean I figured it couldn't hurt and at very least it could displace any water that might find its way inside of here. And of course do not forget to clean the rotors. Right out of the box they come with oil on them and that's pretty much to prevent them from rusting while they sit on the shelf. So you want to make sure you clean the front and the back pretty much anywhere where the pads are going to make contact with the rotor. I'm using brake parts cleaner here but you could also use soap and water. I've used it plenty of times and it works just as well. Now here's something that I noticed while I was editing videos so I did have to come back and fix that. And now it's time to reinstall the 36mm nut but you're not supposed to reuse the old one so make sure you get a new one. This nut has to be torqued down to 295 pound feet. So yes, I did have to go out and buy a new torque wrench just for this job alone. Granted, it's not the best torque wrench. It is a Harbor Freight, but you know what? It's better than nothing and it's definitely better than just running it down with an impact gun. One step that's easily overlooked is cleaning all of the rust off of the bracket. Now if you have a brand new bracket here you can see the pad should slide back and forth smoothly. Now if you add rust into the mix all of a sudden the pad doesn't want to fit. And this is why it's important to get all of the rust off of your caliper bracket. Now I know that's an exaggerated demonstration but it's pretty much the basic uh, concept as to what happens. 
so when it comes down to install your brake pads they should just kind of pop right in you should not have to use any type of force at all to put the brake pads on if you do chances are that there's just excessive amount of rust on your caliper bracket I'm applying a thin layer of grease onto the bracket. Now the hardware kit is going to go on top of this. So basically I'm just trying to prevent the rust from building up between the bracket and the hardware kit. And once you install your hardware kit, make sure to clean off any excess grease that may have squeezed out on the sides. You definitely do not want any of this on the rotors. I don't think these fasteners had any type of thread locker on them, but I just like to play it safe and put a little bit of blue thread locker on all of the brake fasteners that I've removed. These fasteners that hold down the caliper bracket to the knuckle are usually on there pretty tight. It's always best to just follow the torque specs, do it right the first time, and just play it safe. Now here's what I was talking about earlier, the brake pads should just slide in pretty easy. You should not need any type of excessive force to get the brake pads on. And while you're in here, you might as well check the slide pins on the caliper. It's easy to remove them and inspect them. Even if there is some grease on here, it's just best to clean it off and reapply a fresh coat of grease. After you put the slide pin in, most likely there's going to be air trapped behind it. So to get the air out, all you have to do is push on the slide pin and pull back on the rubber boot right at the edge and it should let the air out.
and now it's time to put these springs on they pretty much just separate the pads and these are also included in the new hardware kit it's just another reason why you should get a decent set of pads that include the hardware kit or if not just go out and buy it separate but you definitely want to replace these clips Now at this point I've already done both sides of the truck so the brakes on the front of the truck are completely done and I have my lug nuts on there nice and snug so now I can lift up the truck and remove both of my jack stands. And just like any other nut or bolt on the truck you should always torque it down the spec you definitely don't want these loose and of course you don't want to over tighten them as well because you can break the studs off now ideally you would want to torque these down the spec right now drive the truck around for a little while and then come back and re-torque again just to make sure everything's okay now you can go ahead and put your cap back on your nut and don't forget about the cotter pin you should always replace the cotter pin so once you remove the old one just toss it out And once you're done with the brakes, before you start up your truck, just get in it and pump the brake pedal a few times. You just want to get that pressure back before you start it up. Okay, so we have some bonus footage. That tone ring that I pointed out earlier that was bent out of place. When I initially took the truck for a test drive, the speed sensor for that wheel kept dropping out. So we had unwanted ABS activation and it was the front right wheel. So right here in the screen, it would be the top right graph. And I just went back in there and I bent that tone ring back into place as best as I could. And here are the results. You can see that the front right speed sensor is acting just like all the other three. So that's a fix. And that's pretty much it. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're considering subscribing, don't forget to hit that notification bell. And like always, thanks for watching.